Hello and welcome back to Operations with Void. I'm your host, Forgotten Void, and this week we are going back to the standard operations as uh, the Halloween operations uh, don't come in for a couple weeks into the patch and uh, I don't have any other replays available for me for the Halloween ops at this time. So this time we are going to be using a battleship, specifically the Italian premium battleship Roma in the tier, formerly tier 6 operation Raptor Rescue. So we're going to be showing how to use a battleship in Raptor Rescue basically uh, because the Roma it's not really a fast one, it's not really a slow one, it's just kind of your average standard battleship. Uh, Billy, I guess 30 knots, it's barely up there where it's considered in the fast category um, but it's not your French very fast ones or uh, it's not battle cruiser speed uh, and then the artillery it's only 380 guns so they're not good it's not like North Carolina where you start with 406's uh, you get nine of them but they're pretty inaccurate usually so they follow the traditional Italian accuracy. The thing that this one gets above the other Italians is it has HE, so you can and do good damage to destroyers, and you can set fires. Whereas the other Italians, only fire setting guns are the uh, secondaries, which 90 millimeters with only 15 millimeters of armor penetration is not good for setting fires. Well. It, sorry, it's not good for anything but setting fires. Uh, so build I have here is more or less survivability with uh, Adrenaline Rush. Or he took a priority target over recent years because the guns already turn pretty fast at 30 seconds, 180 turn time. So that's pretty good. I could bring it up and that would go bring it down to 25 seconds. But what I'm looking at is to get either concealment or the extra heal for the this gun. Don't touch anything with secondaries because as I just mentioned they're pretty bad. Anyways, um, so yeah, and as you can see, I'm running Cincinnati because why not? With the starting main battery firing range of 18 kilometers. The first kill to extend the range actually is very helpful. So with that, uh, we will go ahead and hop into battle. And so for this one, as you can see, I'm in a division with uh, two uh, other members, my clan leader, Doom Beagle, and uh, Brooklyn, who does happen to be a Wargaming employee. We are also on my server hanging out. Um, this one we were just dusting off snowflakes and so that's why I'm in the Roma. I generally don't play this ship because I don't really like it. Mostly because it doesn't hit anything in my experience. But uh, it's a premium and I was using it to get credits because I always need credits. Uh, Brooklyn was going through his ARP ships and Doom was just... I, I think Doom was also... No, Doom had already gotten all of his things, so he was just uh, grinding through the Italian, Spanish ship. So if you notice, I have a uh, HE loaded, and that's so we can throw once. And I have HE loaded with AP lined up. This is so we throw one salvo at the... Um, destroyer wherever it is and then after that one salvo we will uh, uh, swap to armor piercing either for the cruiser or the battleship so destroyer is found we send one salvo of HE that way we somehow get four hits and we have armor piercing lined up now it looks like the uh, cruisers already been spotted and uh, being fired upon, so we're probably not going to get anything on the cruiser. The Alba there, so we're going to go ahead and throw uh, 
armor piercing at the Fuso. Now one good thing about uh, priority target is you know if people sh targeting you or not and so because I'm not being targeted I know I can keep my broadside and keep all nine guns so I'm turning in just in case I start being targeted if I do get targeted I should turn all the way in balance to balance the shots but because I'm not the target at the moment the rook next to me is slightly closer and is the target at the moment I can get all nine of my guns get that little bit of extra damage and chance to get a citadel like that And also, the closer you are to your target, the uh, easier it is to hit things. Yeah. Let me, here I am just stating the obvious. And someone's going to type in chats and comments says, No, no, even when you're close, the one shell will go above them, one shell will hit the water in front of them. War gave me RNG bad. Depending on the ship, that's... Uh, that can be true. The, it sure feels that way for the uh, Japanese ships. The closer you are, the more, less accurate they seem to become. Had the lead, right? But it, they've landed behind them. Now one looks like it's going to straddle. I didn't lead it enough this time. And uh, we have a straddling with one. You know, if the shells actually went where you pointed them, we wouldn't have the issue, but oh well. Simulating uh, World War II naval gunnery, especially Italian naval gunnery. And pop goes the Miyoko. So there you see how the flare pop up. Um, that's because we got a kill with Cincinnati and so we have the ex increased gun range. And Cincinnati is pretty much required for all Italian ships. <laughs> that's the sad part about the Italian line. They're all built around Cincinnati. All of them. Every single one. And uh, it was called out hard when the Italian destroyers came out because their gun range is so short that you need Cincinnati and all of them to do well. Almost like all the people testing only use Cincinnati and so because of that uh, testers eh, can't use whatever uh, commanders they want anymore. Uh, so, I'm stopping here just in case the Mogami goes forward. Um, but it seems that Brooklyn's torpedoes did the job. And this is kind of... Because as a battleship, what you are trying to do is you are guarding the convoy. You're making sure the convoy is protected. And part of that is being up in front. And so if you notice Doom's out, so he's... We don't have any, really any destroyers, so Doom's playing the scout. He is going up in front and trying to find the enemy. Also getting to position where you can uh, shoot these destroyers up. But he also spotted a Nagato uh, up north. And the, at the moment that he sees the Nagato, there's, uh, there's really no way for him to go. So he's just going in full speed because he, that's all he can do no matter which way that Nagato is going to delete him uh, 
So even though uh, he's being called back, there there's no way for him to safely retreat. But what he did do was he spotted the uh, where the enemies are, so we know more or less what's coming up and what's not. So because the Nagato's in the north, we know that there's not going to be a, a Nagato in the south. So we can kind of prepare more for the enemy. And full to zero, uh, deleted by the Nagato. The bots are, um, the bots are uh, very accurate. You should not underestimate them. And so I'm actually if the typing in chat. I have, hopefully, I have chat covered by now, uh, because uh, it gets uh, pretty rough in chat as they complain about being with idiots when they're not. It's just the uh, bot. Nagato, if it says you're going to be deleted, you're going to be deleted. Simple as that. Also, because this because this sh game mode is so random, it spawns that depending on where you go, you could just be in a position where you can do nothing to survive. I try not to put myself into those positions. Uh, like where Doom was coming out, I would kind of just sit at that corner and edge out or c come back. And that's probably what I would have done. But usually I would go further south. But there, I, I mean, I've died many times in this because mostly because of the ships in the north. I don't like when there's ships in the north. <laughs> but since it was spotted, I instead of for me being dying to them, and also I'm in a battleship, I can get into a position where I can protect the convoy against them. As you see, I'm sitting up here at the corner. I'm launching the spotter plane as a cheap, poor man's version of radar. And blopping a Nyoko. And at the angle we're at, it actually has time for the shells to go through the nose and into the citadel. Also, you can overpen the nose, overmatch the nose of the Nyoko. So I was thinking of sitting here for the Nagato, but I decided I might try and send some shells over at the Shokaku, especially since that ship's going to be sending planes at me and I need to be moving to try and dodge the planes. And luckily we don't take any citadels. And so we took a turret from the Nagato. And so we're trying to um, get to a point where uh, we, we can bounce most of the shells. But also we have to dodge the planes at the same time. As the citadels from the planes would hurt. So here I'm trying to turn back to get the front two turrets back on. As with the rear turret getting those two citadels, the front turrets, there we go. So no more Nagato. So with that, we've protected the, uh, the convoy. So now I have to go south because the next a uh, round of ships will either be coming from the GF0 line or they'll be coming from the J0 line because the uh, exit's in the south. So in a slow battleship, you don't want to be this far up. You kind of want to be closer to the convoy, but you get front of Ranger, if that makes sense, uh, and be a tank there. Whereas the fast battleships, you can be a little bit more uh, uh, 
aggressive and be out furthermore. And so now we see the key is spotted, the Nagato is spotted. So the um, we know the battleships are, and that's actually better for us. So we don't have to go as far south to engage the ships, uh, especially since of the ships left, uh, we have three battleships and only two cruisers. And only one of them has torpedoes. Uh, having torpedoes means that you can actually charge up the battleships and torpedo them. Uh, especially the Oigan, with how tanky it is, it, if you angle right, you can bounce shells off the side. I think. Let me ch check that real quick. No, ne never mind. Oigan, you cannot do that. Yeah, you you cannot do that with a wagon because unless they hit the armor belt at the waterline, you're you're taking the shell. Uh, if they're but an wagon can bounce three eighties, so she is tanky in that way. But the key and the Nongato have four four tens. Um, the the person in chat is being uh, really aggressive, so that's why it's it's covered, so you don't have to bother with that, and that's why you keep hearing the clicking sound because I'm also typing in chat. Anyways, so I was look I shot the first one at the key because the key has torpedoes, and uh, no, you shouldn't be that close. And the Massachusetts is about to find why you don't get close to a key. I instead of going for the key because the key actually has a, an Amagi have a turtle back I went for the Nagato because I know I can get the Citadel and as you saw we got several Citadels and were able to sink it while the key I would not have been able to do that now here I'm looking at the upper belt trying to get um, more penetrations but instead we still get five ricochets yeah, and I'm not even sure how eight of my nine shells hit probably because they were going to be ricochets or it might be that because we're less than five kilometers away and you see I'm trying to keep uh, all my guns on target if if we had ships left alive this would be a decent place to be, is you could instantly insta gib uh, a cruiser as it uh, spawns in. But because we have three ships down, none of the uh, teleport spawns are going to come in. If we had two sh ships coming in, then sitting here would mean that the other spot would be spawning cruisers which doesn't really help us but if you had a friend in there that was at the closer to the other one then it would help them so with that we're kind of trying to be in the thick of it i mean it, near the end we weren't really in the thick of it because we were so far away but we were in the thick of it until the end and if you're with another person who can be in the thick of it at the end then you can more or less tank for the a match by being the closest target you will take a, the heat off of uh, Raptor and the uh, transports and that's kind of the thing about tanking in front is not just being next to it if you're not really sure then you can kind of sit in front of Raptor but you actually need to be in front of Raptor in one way or another like closer to where the enemies would spawn and be in front of them otherwise you, you're not going to be tanking as well so I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the results screen now So as you can see with our C-Star, we had a 5-star victory, 5 kills and 13 Citadels. This is in 270k damage. And top of the board in Aroma. 
This is probably my best game with Aroma ever with this many 273k damage. I did not expect to play this. I was just going to play and have fun, but yeah, no, I was not expecting playing the Roma. The reason why we skipped ahead is because Raptor Rescue is just so slow. After you kill everything, then you're just sitting around waiting. And I guess that's why they have the insert coin achievement for those who have nothing but time to do and just want to throw torps at the uh, paper ship. But uh, even the paper ship, it... it It'd be nice if it didn't spot you. Like, the spotting people makes it such a bad thing in the game because it's supposed to be a, uh, a neat thing at the end that you can get an achievement, but instead it actually becomes a full detriment to the game, especially if you're in a destroyer that doesn't want it or a cruiser and you don't want to be spotted. Anyways, um you have any questions any comments go feel free to let me know i'm here happy to talk about it. as you can see here's roma's uh layout with the armor layout with your 375 belt and 70 millimeters up and your 32 nose anyways yeah go ahead feel free to like and subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more but I'm not going to force you because I'm not your mother. I do, however, hope to see you again next week. Have a good one.